What's going on everyone? Justin here with Trading Cards and More back with another video. I know it's been a little while, kind of been laying low. Uh, haven't had a whole lot, any products to open or anything to talk about. Uh, but uh, we made a pretty pretty big purchase here. Um, if you've read the title, we spent over seven grand on some prospects. Yes, some Sapphire prospects. Um, those of you who don't know, PSA recently raised their prices. Um, Got our last PSA submission off right on the deadline and uh, got got those prices locked in. Moving forward, um, I'm looking at submitting more high-end cards, a, a lot less of the, you know, buy it for 10 bucks, grade it, and sell it for 100 type cards. Um, so I just think Sapphire is kind of a premium product. Um, anybody's looking for, for a guy's, you know, main rookie card, they're going to go after the, you know, the Topps Chrome sapphire or they're going to go after the first bowman chrome sapphire so um some pretty big names here um front and center we got torkelson uh we got robert hassel we got ed howard and then i got a kerstad heston kerstad we'll get into these um those naysayers out there um you know you put your money into some big cards and you can definitely turn turn it into a pretty nice profit uh we got blake's in the house uh, Brett's in the house. What's going on guys? So I'm just gonna set these to the side and show you guys a few cards I invested in last year um, and how that investment turned out um, So if you've been following the channel you probably know I picked up a LeBron collection last summer off a guy from Indiana for $2,600 and change. Um, I got six LeBrons This is five of them um, The other one was a tops collection basically the tops rookie but it has a different image on it i sold that on ebay for like 400 something um so then i was about 2200 dollars all in to these um this one's a 10 the, the actual one i graded was a nine but i had I, I kept the 10 and sold the nine uh the 10 i think is worth about 1600 and the nine's around 500 so you might be able to knock a thousand dollars off my estimate here but um uh, the main ones were the guy had the Bowman Gold, um, the, the base Bowman, the Bowman Chrome, and then the Tops First Edition. Um, the Bowman is not worth a ton. It's like $1,400. Um, the prices have been really kind of fluctuating on LeBron cards. But this is like your base rookie card. I was getting these for like $200 raw last year. Now they're, they're crazy. Um... Then I got the Bowman Chrome, which was more high, a little bit more high end. This one, I was surprised, came back a nine. I was thinking it was a, an eight, with a, a little bit of a shot at a nine. So I was really happy with that. Um, this one's worth about forty five hundred. Um, so already we've already more than paid for what I spent on these cards. The gold one I was looking at in particular because it um, didn't have a crap ton of chipping on the back, which this card is pretty pretty common for it does have the chipping but i think when they graded they took that into account that this was a pretty prime example of this card the front does have the left to right off centering i just got some goop on the plastic here um and i think there was maybe a little scratch on the surface or something so i was actually really surprised on this one i was hoping for an eight and i got a nine out of it this one it's hard to hard to find comps because it's, it's pretty low pop but i think the last one went for about 10 grand on this one so pretty stoked on that one. And the other one I was really excited about. These were the two cards I mainly bid on the auction for. Um, this LeBron. It's not just his tops rookie card, but it has the first edition logo on it. Which makes it about 20 times as rare as the, the regular tops. So if you look at like the PSA 9 price on the regular tops, this one's going to be worth a lot more because it's 20 times as rare. Um, I think the last one sold for about 7400 on this one but it did spike up to around 10 11 grand um so these five cards you know like i said i put about 20 2500 2600 dollars into them uh, i'm looking at about the current day about twenty five thousand. Um, but i am holding them um i'm gonna wait till he goes into the hall of fame after he retires and everything after his legacy is done Somewhere down the line, I'll eventually sell these off, but I'm holding them. I think LeBron's a great hold. Uh, okay, Colleen, what's going on? Dylan, what's up? James, Darren, 
what's going on. So getting into the Sapphire cards, uh, now that you know my history of buying and grading and selling and all that stuff, um, this was my approach on these. Uh, this particular seller had probably opened a pretty good amount of this product. Um, I'm guessing he had dumped a pretty good amount of money into it. Uh, which is pretty smart because this, I mean, it's a great product. Um, Groovy, Loopy, what's going on? Welcome to the channel. Um, the, the main one I wanted to go after was Spencer Torkelson. He's the number one draft. Um, he had 31 Spencer Torkelsons. Prices range about 180 to 200 bucks on this card. Uh, but I bid it up pretty high because I knew um, based on his history, his feedback, and the fact that he um, said that these cards weren't picked through at all. Uh, I took his word for it. Um, I paid basically about 174 per card on the Spencer Torkelson. $5,400. It's a lot of money. Uh, the PSA 10s on this are right around 1000 bucks. There's not too many comps right now. Um, but my plan is to look these over. Uh, if they look like they're going to 10, I will either, I'll probably express them. Pay the $150, it's a lot of money. But even with the 175 and the 150 to grade, I'm in it like 225. And if it gets a 10, or sorry, 325. I'm in it 325 bucks, but if it gets a 10, I'll sell it for a thousand bucks and I'm gonna clear over $500 in profit. Um, some of these are probably a little bit off center. If it's really off center, I'm not even gonna grade it. Um, like you can see that one's top to bottom little bit so that one might nine if it looks like it's probably good not even nine like this one top to bottom I can tell it it's a little bit easier if I tilt it sideways but you can see that bottom border is a lot skinnier than the top so there's a chance I could get an eight so if I think it's not even gonna get a nine I won't even grade it I'll just sell it ungraded get my money back out of it not a big deal um Michael what's going on uh so yeah, if they're gonna, if I think they're gonna ten, I, I'm, my plan is to send like as many of these as I can, ex, like express probably. It's right around a two a two month turnaround, so I'll probably get these back. If I send these at the end of March, I'll get them back uh, end of May, right around, and I can get my money back out of all these cards if I get a number of tens on the Spencer Torkelson, um, and then any of them that aren't gonna ten, but I think they still got a decent sh like a good shot at a nine. I'll probably just send them like um regular not regular but bulks i'll just bulk them out for 25 dollars a card and if they come back nine it's not like i'm gonna get upcharged or anything like that um another issue with these cards is they have factory lines i can see and i think on the spencer torkelson specifically towards the top here you can see that line going through the card something like that they're not going to give it a 10 it's got a factory line but it still might get an eight still might get it or sorry it still might get a nine um, centering looks decent on this one, a little bit top to bottom, so maybe this one doesn't check out. Um, I don't expect every one of these cards to check out, and that's fine. That's why I, that's why I bought them in bulk because I figured it's just a, it's just a numbers game when you're doing grading, you know, when you're buying these kind of collections and stuff. It's kind of a numbers game. There's another one where it's a little top to bottom. That one's got a line there. Unfortunately, with these uh, sapphires, you're going to have factory lines. If they're good enough centered and there's just the one factory, I might just send them off. Like I said, bulk submission. And if I get nines on all of them, that's fine. Still, They still command a premium with a nine. Um, just not as much as you're going to get, obviously, with a ten. Because everybody wants ten. Uh, a ten, obviously. So I am seeing a lot of lines. This one doesn't have the line. That one's got good centering, so you might have a 10 candidate right there. Um, I'm not going to take them all out of plastic or anything like that right now. I'll do all this later. That's going to line. That one looks really nice. So, yeah, let me know what you guys think. This was, like I said, $5,400 for this stack of Torkelsons. But if I get five ten, if I get six tens, sell them for a thousand bucks a piece. I've already, you know, paid for the whole order. Um, and then all the ones I sell raw and all the ones I sell that are nines, are, it's all going to be profit. But, yeah, unfortunately, lines going through them on a lot of these. All right, next guy we got is um, 
Hassel. This is a guy that's a prospect on the Padres. I really like the Padres. Um, you, obviously, you got Tatis. You know, you got uh, a couple other guys that are that are a lot of fun to watch on there. Um, what Trent Grisham and then uh, Brett, you'll help me out. The guy that's Manny. What's his name? Manny. Not Manny. That the other guy on the Padres that's a really good batter. Um, I kind of didn't like some of his uh, past, but Machado, Manny Machado, there you go. Yeah, Manny Machado, you know, it's, it's a fun team to watch, you know, especially with Tatis on it. And uh, these are generally going for like $35 a card, maybe even up to $40 a card. Um, I'm not sure what the 10s are going to go for. I'm guessing they're going to be at least a couple hundred bucks a piece. Um, I paid twenty six dollars and fifty five cents per card, so already I got them for a really good price. So even if I were to just sell them all individually, I could easily make my money back and then profit. But obviously, I'm going to grade ones that I think are going to gem. Um, I have a total of twenty seven of these, so a lot of them to look through. These are already looking better than the Torkelsons were. I'm not seeing any factory lines towards the top anyways, but really you gotta take them out of the plastic and look at the surface uh, at different angles and stuff to make sure. Um, but the centerings are looking really, really good on this card. Uh, I'm guessing, yeah, like I said, a PSA 10 will probably be a few hundred bucks, and um, there's a good chance these could trend upwards, you know, moving closer to him coming up. Um, you know, you look at Bobby Witt, he he had a big home run, and all of a sudden his price has literally doubled, almost tripled overnight. Something like that happens to a guy like this, and this card's selling for 100 bucks raw, and all of a sudden his his PSA 10s are like 500 bucks, and I'm, you know, $26.55 into all these. So I think it was a smart buy. Um, I always look at the risk-reward, and the, and the downside was not very uh, bad on these at all. And there's a lot of upside, so um, yeah, really nice cards. Stoked about those. Um, man, the kid was born in 2001. <laughs> yeah, 2001. Geez, I was getting out of high school. Um, <clears throat> okay, next we have Ed Howard. This guy's a Cubs prospect. I know Brett's gonna be stoked on this one. He's a big Cubby guy. Seems like Cubs have had some pretty good prospects over the years. This one you can see like kind of a line going right through the center of it. See how it's on there and it's not on that one. So that would definitely affect it there. Um, not too uh, familiar with this guy, but just looking at his prices, once again, he's around that $35 to $40 raw range. I paid uh, just under 28 bucks a card on these ones. And I believe there's 29 of them. So, I mean, I paid a pretty, pretty penny for these cards, obviously, but... Like I said, when you're buying in bulk, it's really a numbers game. Where the hassle's from the same... Yeah, all these cards were from the same seller. He had, like, everybody. I mean, I bid on a lot of different cards. I think I put about $12,000 in bids in. Use a loop or a magnifying glass. I just have a really good light up here. It does have a magnifying lens I'll show you here. It's just one of these lights where, you know, you can adjust the light a little bit. Uh, it does have a magnifying lens, but I just find if I get get it right under the light and I can move it about and I can look at it pretty up close. I don't really need a magnifying lens or anything like that. Um, so as long as you can see the card, it looks good. And you know, I have a pretty good 10, 10 and nine ratio uh, with my PSA subs. So I'd say I'm, I'm doing pretty good. Um, any other questions you guys have, do let me know. But yeah, um, I'm not too familiar on this guy. Brett, do you know anything about Ed Howard? If we read the back, a lot of times they give it like a nice resume on here. It says last year he was uh, player of the year in Illinois. That's very cool. Perfect game preseason All-American. Hit 421 with 33 RBIs and 16 steals. 42 runs as a high school junior um, in 19. So that means he just got out of high school. Um, what does it say here? Born in, yeah, born in August of 2001. That's nuts. Six foot two, right-handed. Um, yeah, I just, you know, Cubs have had some good prospects. I mean, they got Nico. He hasn't done a whole lot, but, I mean, 
Eloy, he was a, a prospect for the Cubs. Then he got traded to the White Sox. Um, Dylan got four cards submitted to HGA. Did 30-day service. Very cool. Yeah, that's awesome, man. It's hard to get in with HGA, so let us know how that goes. Yeah, that's why I said, Brett, this guy opened a lot of this stuff. He had color parallels of all different... He had all different ones. I think he had, like... Was it Ed Howard? He had three yellows out of him. I mean, that's awesome. Um, but yeah, these are looking really good on the centering. Really just have to look them over for surface issues, factory lines. This one might have one more towards the center. But I'm sure there's going to be some gems in here. I mean, it's just a, it's just a numbers game. Um, and the ones I just sell raw, I can easily get my... $27 back. I'll probably get more like 35 or 40 per. Um, I'll be a little bit more nitpicky on these, obviously, because they're not as high dollar, but who knows what this is going to go for in a PSA 10. 300, 400, who knows. Um, mainly, you just have this, you know, the front centering on these that you really want to look at. You know, if you can eyeball it and uh, see that it's shifted one way or the other, like this one's too much top to bottom. You can see the skinny bottom big on the top. So right off the bat, you know, it's not even worth sending that one in. Um, but I have a few uh, curse dads already set to the side. One is a yellow out of 99, and it looks like a 10. So I'm probably, I might even express that one out, because there's only one PSA 10 out there right now, and the guy's asking like five grand for it. I got that card for basically like a hundred bucks. I got a steal on it. Um... Last card we have is a Heston Kerstad, the big prospect for the Orioles. Um, these cards are infamous for being shifted that way. Um, this one is a little bit, but I have seen them with the centering that still got 10s. Um, I did glance at the surface on this one, and it did look pretty darn nice. I was, I was not seeing any factory lines. So fingers crossed on this one. Like I said, I have the yellow. I'll probably express that one. I'll probably express this one as well, as long as it checks out. Um, it is numbered out of 25, so there's only 25 of them out there. And I think, you know, the orange is popular in of itself, but the fact that it matches the jersey, it's just a sick-looking card. Um, I paid... Let me see what I paid for this. I paid $3.95 for this, for four, so 400 bucks. So even with the grading, I'll be in at 550 bucks, and this will be a four-figure card for sure. I mean, it's just a sick card. The next best thing to this would be the red or, you know, the one of one. Or if you get uh, one of these with an auto on it, Prospect Autos. Those are pretty nice, but I just like the um, the non-auto auto cards. And, uh, yeah, orange card. I mean, if he, if he blows up, this will be a big card. Uh, it says he batted 343 with a 1.0 OPS. Um, Arkansas, Arkansas tenure slugged 791 in 2020. Uh, National Player of the Week on 2 of 18. Pounded 17 home runs in 2019. Um, Eye-popping raw power. Uh, pummels mistakes. Uses big leg kick. So he sounds like a pretty good prospect. He's one of the top guys. Right now, I've been looking to pick up more of his sapphires. I got one blue, one yellow, and now this orange. Six foot three, two twenty. He bats left-handed but throws right-handed. That's strange. He's born in nineteen ninety-nine, so still pretty young. Looks like he just turned twenty-two. Stoked on him as well. Um, Joel, what's going on? Yeah, I don't consider myself a gambler at all. This is it's it's. Risk reward. Um, you're putting money into something that's going to turn into more money. Basically, that's what all you know grading is. Really, essentially, is is knowing what knowing what to do and knowing when to hold them and when to fold them. Basically, uh, go straight to prospect. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like the orange too, Dylan. It's, it's pretty sick. Loofers. I do have Instagram. It's trading cards and more with the underscores. Same exact as my YouTube. Uh, pretty easy to find. I have like, I don't know, five 5,000 followers, 6,000, somewhere in there. Um, nice return on that. Yeah, thanks, Groovy. Um, so, yeah, I think that's going to be it. Um, 
kind of a different video. I, I haven't done anything like this in a while. Um, like I said on the title, this is my biggest single purchase. Everything was bought from the same buyer. It was one transaction. I was actually worried about my PayPal going through because I didn't know if my bank was going to put a hold on it or something like that. But they said because it's coming through PayPal, it, it's automatic, you know. So I had no problems. Um, I hate rolling the dice with PSA. Yeah, exactly. But like I said, with these and with these here, I'm going to send these. Probably get them back in a year. Not a big, it's not like they're going to come up from the miners, anyways, anytime soon, more than likely. Um, so I don't mind waiting the year on those. Um, all the ones that I'm not going to grade, I'm going to sell them off and probably recoup a good portion of my money right there. And then with the ones that I'm going to express, I'm going to get those back in two months and be able to start selling those off. So for seven grand, I'm hoping to turn it into 20. Uh, we'll see what happens. Um, it's, it's hard to, you know, calculate that because you're selling, selling them at different times and kind of over a long period of time. Yeah, I hope they grade well. <clears throat> I think I'll get some 10s for sure. Uh, I think I'll get some nines. I just got to be really picky on them. Like I said, with the with the Torkelson, he's you know he's the big dog here. Thousand bucks for a ten. I won't be as picky with those. But the ones I send Express, I'm definitely gonna be picky. Um, and the ones I send, you know, just long tail bulk, I won't be as picky because I'm only paying twenty five dollars a card to grade them. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, yeah, Brett says I'll do well on these. Brett's Brett's done some stuff like this. He did. Uh, <laughs> he had a sick soccer card, um, Erling Holland, Sapphire Yellow out of 99, and it got a 9. So he made a pretty good chunk of change on that card. Use a spreadsheet. Um, no, I don't, Groovy. Um, I just, you know, I just know I'm going to make money, so it's not a big deal. When you're dealing with this many cards, you know, yeah, it's, I don't do, I don't do my, uh, my calculating that way. I just, you know. Some people do it that way. It's just too tedious for me to spreadsheet everything out. and I, I don't know. It would be interesting to see how, how I end up on it. But like I said, if I get five or six tens on the Torkel Center, I already made my money back right there. So Sapphire is a short run. Nines on the Sapphires will do well. Yeah, exactly. So even a Torkel Center 9 will probably go for, what, 300 350 somewhere in there. So still do pretty good. Uh, the Torkelsons, I paid 174 a card, so I paid $5,400, which I thought they would go higher just because, you know, they weren't picked, for, picked through or anything. The cards are typically around the 180 mark. Um, maybe you can find some solds around 160, but um, like I said, you're buying a huge chunk of them and they're, not, you know, not picked through or anything. So as long as I have a handful of tens in there, I'm doing pretty damn good. And if I have to sell them all off, you know, just as they are, worst case scenario, I can basically recoup my money. So, yeah, I can adapt. That's that's what I've told people. You know, it, I've gotten bashed in the comments about, oh, you're grading this, you're grading this one dollar card here, and and you're the reason why PSA is all backed up. Blah blah blah. Kind of the metaphor I used um, was that you know, if you go to McDonald's to get food and there's 50 people in the line. And you're waiting for 20 minutes are you getting out of your car and screaming at everybody in line are they the problem or is it actually mcdonald's is the problem because they're not getting the food done and out the out the door fast enough to keep up with the demand and that's what's basically going on on a psa is they're just not able to keep up with the demand and they they can just hire and hire and hire and expand and everything but the, the once you start to get backed up it's just a never-ending thing and you know they're raising the prices was their attempt to um, start to tackle that backlog. So it was something that had to be done. And it, I don't think it, you can point the finger at anybody that's sending cards in because everybody has the right to send any card in that they want. If they're willing to pay the price to grade it and it's worth it to them, then how can you point the finger at someone and you know call them it, whatever. So that's kind of my thought process on it. And I've heard other people say the same thing. It's usually just the naysayers and the crybabies and the, you know, ah, this hobby sucks, everything's so expensive, ah, you can't grade cards anymore because it's too expensive because of you guys. And, you know, they just con I constantly want to bicker and cry and moan and, you know, and those those like me and, you know, Brett and those that have a brain cell, uh, we're, we're going to be successful no matter what. And the, and the bigger the hobby grows and the more money that gets dumped in the hobby, 
just means more money in our pockets at the end of the day. So that's that's kind of my thought process on it. Um, Josh said, how long does it take for Express? So usually it gets there, they check it in. Um, and then it, once once they have to get it into the system, I think my order took like two weeks to get into the system. Um, after that, it, you know, starts to get grading, graded and all that. Um, I think the, t the total turnaround you're looking at is about two months. So you send it off today, you know, it gets there in three, four days, they get it logged in, they get it graded, and then they get it done and get it shipped back. You're looking at two months to the day, pretty much. If it's a little bit less than that, then you're getting lucky, I guess. But uh, And then the uh, regular service, which is $100 a card, you're probably looking at about four months on that. So I'd rather just pretty much pay the, the 150 a card um, and get it back in two months, especially if it's something high dollar, like something like this, if I get a 10 on that. I'm probably listing it for like five grand, so ten times what I paid for it. Um, yeah, see, people that are know the situation pretty much agree, but you're always going to get internet trolls and people that go on people's videos and bicker and everything like that. So some people would just never be happy in life. But um, yeah, so this is kind of what I've been doing. Uh, there's some other guys I'm I'm looking to buy. Um, Zach Veen is one of the guys. Uh, I did bid on his, but they just went way too high. Um, and these Sapphire cards are not common. I mean, you go on eBay, for instance, and you look up his Sapphire card, and you're going to see like 10, 15 of them for sale. I mean, they're just, I don't think they print these into Oblivion or, Oblivion or anything like that, and they're so, you know, sought after. Um, and it, it, a lot of them do get graded, I, I'm assuming. Um, so it's just, it's not easy to get the cards that you want at the right price and, you know, it's in the condition that you want and all that kind of stuff so but if you put in the work you can find these cards and make the buys pull the trigger you know and uh as long as you're as long as you're being smart about it you know you can definitely make some money um so yeah if you guys have any more questions let me know um just thought this would be cool to kind of show off and i can come back and look at it later on and maybe uh when i get get all these cards kind of sold through I can give more of a rundown on on how much I made off the, the whole thing but some cards you end up holding on to like you know if this gets a 10 maybe I don't even want to sell it and I want to wait till he comes up to the you know and starts he does like a number like Tatis where his cards just go crazy and a card like that all of a sudden is worth like 20 grand <laughs> you just you just never know it's it's a risk but it's also you know you got to look at the risk reward um ST, what's going on? I don't have any sealed box openings on, on the way or anything like that. Kind of what uh, Brett said. Um, this stuff is just so darn expensive. You go to a hobby shop and it's like, you want to pay $800 for a hobby box, you know what I mean? You go to Walmart, Target, there's literally nothing on the shelf. I, mean, I was just in there today. There was, it was cleaned out, not a single thing. So it doesn't matter waiting for them to stock. As far as basketball goes, it's gone. I mean, you're just never going to find it. Um, and then with the baseball stuff, pretty much I'm waiting for like, you know, series two, uh, tops update, tops, Chrome Bowman. Those are, those are the stuff that I want to open. I don't really want to touch a lot of the other stuff. So when the good products come out and there's stuff that you can find on the shelf, you know, I'll be opening it just like top series one. We opened quite a few hanger boxes. We opened probably 10 blasters, 10, 11 blasters. So I will open stuff like that, but. Um, there's just nothing nothing out there right now that I can really open. Um, Josh, what's going on? I don't really collect hockey cards, but I did get into some hockey cards. Um, I bought a bunch of Lafreniers. Those are at PSA right now, Express. Should get those back within within a month or so. Uh, also, I have some other PSA orders coming back. Uh, I have a 460 card uh, Ultra Modern that's in um, assembly right now. And then they have a 50 card Pokemon order that is uh, currently in uh, quality check too. So I'm hoping to get that back by next week. So I will do those PSA return videos uh, when they happen, hopefully soon, so I can get some more cards kind of rolling here. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, any more questions, let me know in the comments. Uh, ST said Donner's Blasters are $90 on eBay. <laughs> that is crazy. Yeah, I looked at the uh, Donner's Basketball little metal balls are going for like 80 bucks or something apparently people don't remember what already happened with hoops that card was like 80 dollars out of the gate now you can get them for like 20 bucks all day long 
you go to the card shows, you can get them for like 15. Um, yeah, Canada, nice. Up in Canada, eh? <laughs> I'd like to get up to Canada. I almost went up there. I do have a um, uh, passport, but um, yeah, I just haven't made it to Canada yet. But it would be cool to travel through Canada a little bit. Um, but yeah. Uh, Rob's from Canada too. Nice, nice. So what's uh, prospecting like up in Canada? I'm sure that you yeah. got the Blue Jays are a fun team. I like them. Um, Vladdy's Vladdy's looking pretty good this year, and uh, you got what? Uh, Bichette, not Bichette. Yeah, Bichette, and Biggio. Um, pretty good team. So, yeah. Thanks for got. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Um, let me know what you think of my purchase. Uh, have a good weekend if we don't see you again. Uh, also, Brett, um, who's in the chat, he, he's doing a pretty big opening today. It's his uh, his one-year anniversary on his channel. Uh, he's opened a pretty good amount of Topps Chrome from 2020. Uh, he's got some blasters and some uh, cello packs. So, Brett, if you want to post your link, or um, you can even do it in the, in the comment section. Um, or just click on his name there in the chat and you can go check his video out. He's going live in a half hour here. So yeah Yeah, is there any sealed product in Canada? That's a good question too, Brett. That would be nice, but Thanks for watching guys. Appreciate it And we'll see you in the next one